This is Aaron from Gemini Syndrome, and you're watching DeBelly. Hi, this is Dave from DeBelly, and uh, we're at Club Red tonight. We're going to talk to Aaron from Gemini Syndrome. Welcome to Phoenix. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you're out on tour right now, which is well, it's the last night of the tour. You're almost, you're almost home. You're that, that home, homeward stretch. How did the tour go? Uh, did you have some fun while you're out? We did. Uh, the shows were great. We had a plethora of transportation issues. Uh, we spent the majority of it was a short run, it was like 16 days, but we spent the majority of that without air conditioning in the desert, in the Midwest, in the middle of summer. Uh, so that was uh, less than uh, desirable, so to say. But we had great shows, good turnouts, um, and despite all of that stuff, we had a good time. So, yeah, See, that's the challenges of rock and roll. I mean, uh, life on the road, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's the curse of Gemini syndrome, I think. So we always seem to have some kind of issue with our with our vehicles or whatever. But well, that happens. So uh, as I understand it, this tour is kind of a planned break from uh, writing and recording the new record. Um, I'd like to ask a few questions about it. I don't know how deep you want to get into it, but uh, I'm just kind of curious at you know where you're at, how far you're going, and so on. Um, we're We've made a lot of progress on it. Um, the most work that needs to be done at this point is, is lyrics and melodies on my end. Uh, the only issue with that is that so that everybody wrote a bunch of great material, and then as time goes on, they I start writing, and then they keep writing better material, and it just keeps getting cooler and cooler. So I don't know when that stops. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So every time I we've got a, f a few things definitely like pretty concrete and finished. And then I'll go over to record the demo versions of those, and they're like, okay, check out what we did yesterday. I'm like, well, that's amazing, so let's work on that instead, you know? Yeah, yeah. So at some point, you have to say enough's enough, and this is our record. And the budget always steps in for the artistic, because uh, the artistic endeavor is going to continue forever. For sure, for sure. And, uh, you know, I just hate to turn, turn our backs on something that's really, really great. Um, not to say that the, the stuff that was initially put forth wasn't, wasn't awesome, too. You know, it just keeps getting more and more kind of out there and creative and more um, uh, genuine, I guess, for lack of a better word. I don't know. More has more personality to it or something. I don't know. That's very cool. Now, I'm guessing here that this is the the final portion of the trilogy that you began with Lux and Memoto. Memort. <laughs> Memento Mori. I got this wrong in the last interview I did with you guys, too, but I'll, it's okay. I just uh, difficult words for me to say. Uh, so I, I'm guessing this is the third part of the trilogy. Correct. So dealing with um, the end of cycles, death, transformation, rebirth, that kind of stuff. It's interesting. I, I know that um, from what I read, you're a fairly spiritual guy, and it uh, very much transitions into the music the band creates. I think um, it adds depth to the songs themselves. It gives much more meaning than just the, the simple twos and fours and let's have a good time. Um, I'm sure that's intentional, right? You mean to bring your, I'm not trying to say impress your, your spirituality upon people, but you're free with sharing it. Yeah, I'd say instead of impress, I would say express. Yeah. You know, um, I've been talking a lot with a, a few different people recently about, you know, how people write and what they write about. And I think ultimately you write about your personal experiences, or at least from your perspective of it, of what you experience in the world, you know. And if you're writing party songs, that's cool. If that's what your deal is, you know what I mean, so be it. Um, that's not where my head's at, so that's not what comes out, you know what I mean. It's, it's, it, 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 so it's not even so much an intentional thing, it's more of a natural kind of progression. It's just that's what... When I put pen to paper, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm thinking about. So, it's um, I'll, I'll I'll say flat out, it was ambitious for Gemini Syndrome to come together and put out their first record. And you know, the statement that this is a trilogy, this is three albums. There's a lot of bands out there to struggle to get that first album out, and they hope they do a second. You guys are looking deeper 
you know, in further into the future. Can you talk a little bit about that, the, the view that you have going forward? I mean, even that was kind of a natural progression in and of itself. You know, the, the, the first record got written and we looked at kind of the subject matter and it fell into that first that first piece of the pie, you know what I mean? And uh, it just became more and more focused as time went on. So Memento Mori came out and really dealing with that kind of middle section, that middle ground of existence and realizing your mortality and realizing the, the shortness of this experience, um, which lends itself to obviously the cycle has to come full circle um, at some point. And you would then need, that's just part of the experience too. So it wasn't like, a, I don't think it was over ambitious, really. But again, you know, talking about writing what we think about, writing what I experience, writing what goes through my head. And that's something that I think about a lot. And in all of, you know, any kind of spiritual study or esoteric study or religious study or philosophical study or psychological study or whatever, they all fall into that general, um, that general structure, you know, of a beginning, a middle, and an end, and then eventually a, a turnaround. So... It's the natural elements, I guess, to any story, uh, irrespective of what you're, you're speaking about. Um, is there a plan in place regarding this album that you're currently working on, such as we plan on finishing it this year, we're going out on tour next year, or anything like that? I mean, that's probably pretty accurate. I definitely think we'd like to have it done, recorded, um, and finalized but before the end of the year, for sure. I know we were shooting for the stars at this time last year when people were asking about it, and it's like, well, we're going to have it done by April. You know, it was just biting off more than we could chew, or at least for me. Um, and again, going back to the amount of material that was was presented, and is still being presented now, in the middle of like, okay, we should be, you know, really dialing in the end of it, you know, and then there's still all this new stuff coming, so... But wait, there's more. Yeah, exactly. Which is a good problem to have, for sure. Um, we have this, this two-week run, we have a short run in August, uh, so we'll have about a month off right now, and my plan is to go home and really dive into just trying to finish as much as I can before that August run, and then ideally, when that's over, we start recording and get that out of the way. So I suspect that um, I, I'm. Do you have a Do you have a project name? Do you have an album name in place? I didn't see anything in the research that I saw. Yeah, nothing we're nothing we're letting slip yet. He says with hesitation. Yeah, yeah. Well, are you expecting maybe it'll change? <laughs> maybe. Probably not, but maybe. You never know. <laughs> oh, it's kind of fun. Always the vagueness, right? Well, you know, it's fair enough. You guys, um, like every band out there, you have this, uh, the art that you're creating, and you certainly don't want to uh, betray it. You want to release it properly to the audience so they understand it and present it the way that you envision it. Right. Absolutely. Um, so can you characterize the music on this record? Uh, Memento Mori uh, was a little more hard than uh, Lux. It uh, certainly a little more aggressive than the first album. Um, how would you characterize the music for this record as compared to the other two? I think the first word that came, comes to mind is a little more mature um, on some levels. I would say it's probably a little more experimental comparatively as well. Having Meigs in the band and having him be a part of the writing process and a huge part of the writing process and he's such a such a talented and unique creative mind like the things that he brings forth and the way he mixes with you know AP writing and I really kind of took a step back from dealing with any of the guitar stuff on this record since we had a guitar player to do it you know when we did Memento it was AP myself and, and Brian and that was just the three cooks in the kitchen so Meigs came into the picture and I stepped back. So I've had very little input on that as far as like actually sitting down and playing, um, which I think is cool. It's still, he's, he's, he's brought his own personality into an already existing kind of sound. And so whatever that, whatever that's gonna do, you know what I mean? It gives his, his quirkiness and his craziness and, and his uh, sometimes out of left field ideas that end up What's actually really funny to me on that note is that he'll come to the table sometimes with stuff where he's not so sure of it, and we think it's awesome. He's like, oh, I don't know if this is stupid or not. We're like, all right, it's a winner. We'll put that in the pile that we're going to use for sure. And AP wrote a ton of stuff for this too as well, and uh, 
trying to find a way to mix all of that together is uh, it's a fun process. Now, I read that Mies was um, a part of the Gemini syndrome circles from way back in the beginning and, and so on. So I, I suspect that he was a fairly known quantity. At the same time, being in a band with a person is a little different, particularly going into the studio. Did he surprise you with anything? Was anything that uh, just astonished you, or is it exactly what you expected? I'd say it's kind of what I expected, but which was surprising, if that makes any sense. You know, he always manages to surprise and, and come up with new things that I wouldn't think of doing. You know, the way he plays and the way he thinks about music is his own thing. Just this, And the same with, with everybody in this band. The way Brian plays drums is not the way that I would normally think about it. He comes up with ideas that I could never fathom. AP is a bass player. I can't wrap my head around that guy at all because he's crazy. He, quietly, yes. Yeah. He's, about he's just silently judging me right now. None of this is true. Well, that's all the questions I've got tonight. Is there anything I missed? Anything else you want to talk about? I think we covered just about all of it. That's what's happening. A couple short tours, writing music, and it'll be done as soon as we can get it done. Uh, vehicle trouble, yeah, it's all the usual stuff. Yeah. Even even getting here for the last show, you know. We left Albuquerque last night about 3 in the morning, got about 34 miles west, and the driver felt something rumbling, and we pulled over, and 8 out of 10 lug nuts were off of the rear passenger side tire on the RV. And... For Albuquerque being like a central hub for trucking, there was no one, no truck that could tow an RV. So we sat there for, what, eight hours? Something like that? Something like eight hours. I think we left at like one in the afternoon or something. And uh, picked up a minivan and a U-Haul and put our trailer on that and hauled ass over here. And we just showed up, what, a half an hour ago and do this interview with you and then I'll change and warm up and I'll hit stage. You know, that is a far better story than what could have happened. Yeah, by the skin of our teeth. It's not the first time. Hopefully it will be one of the last or the last. That would be great. If the, if the transportation gods that, that be can uh, hook us up with a little grace in the future, that would be, that'd be well received. Well, thank you much. You have a good night. Have a good set tonight. All right. Thanks.